Hello everybody, I'm Jack Ivey, live in the studios of WRMG TV 12 and also Television 97. Also going to welcome you folks that are watching us on our YouTube channel. You can go to Jack Ivey, uh, after, actually you go to YouTube.com, uh, search Jack Ivey and you'll be able to look at the videos and you'll be able to not only watch the coaches show, you'll be able to watch some highlights of uh, the Tish County Games of the Week. So we hope you'll check us out at all the locations. And hopefully you're going to be at uh, Tish County Friday night. The Cardinals are coming to town, so it's a big, big week for Tish County football. I want to welcome you into the Tish County Braves Football Coaches Show, and we're going to bring back the head coach for the Braves, and he's smiling today. We've got Coach Preston Leathers. Coach, good to see you. Good to see you again, too. Always uh, good to get a win, and of course, uh, after that tough loss, uh, which was a very winnable ball game against uh, Morville last week, I know you all went back to the drawing board. Uh, what did you all uh, work on starting Monday to try to get ready for Alcorn Central? Well, it's like I told you last week, you know, it's just all about our execution and, and our kids being consistent with what they're doing and stuff like that. You know, um, last week I thought that was a problem. You know, I told you that last week that, you know, if I think if we could have done things consistently and executed, I, thought, I think we could have pulled that one out. But, you know, we still got things to work on, but I did, I did think we, that we did a better job of that last Friday night. Of course, the guys after the game, uh, the fans after the game was really excited and uh, hats off to the Tish County fans. They came out in big numbers over at Alcorn Central, and it's always good to see the crowd out there uh, uh, cheering the kids on. And, uh, of course, you, you've got uh, not only a great band, cheerleaders, and, uh, of course, everything that makes up uh, a good Friday night of football. And I know you'd like to uh, not only thank the fans, but all the other folks that are involved in making Friday night so special. Sure. I was, I'll tell you what, I was blown away by the, the crowd sport. You know, it was not only were the, were the bleachers full, but, you know, you look down the end zone and they were, you know, people lined up all around the, the gates and stuff. And, and I told one of our coaches after the game, I'm, I'm sure they'll have us back there every year. That's a good gate for Alcorn Central with us bringing that many fans. So I, I really appreciate them coming out for that. And, Coach, I want to congratulate you. Tish County <coughs> did win the ball game. The final score was 40 to nothing. Uh, we'll have some stats for you coming up in just a little bit. We also got some great highlights. And uh, don't forget, if you'd like to get a copy of any of the Tish County games, we do have those available on DVD. You can contact us at 662-454-9797. And a coach getting a copy, that'd be a great keepsake, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. I've got a spot where I'm going to keep all of them. <laughs> coach is even going to keep them for a keepsake himself. Do you have any videos uh, back when you play? Uh, I've got just a couple, not as many as I'd, I'd like to have. You know, of course, those are back on the VCR tape right. you know, from being back, back then. But I've got a couple of them. I would have been mean to you and said back in the, <laughs> before they even made uh, DVDs, but, uh, but uh, that, I, that, I won't do that. That would be true. That's but sure. uh, uh, I had a chance, I mean, I told you this other day, I had a chance. I've been uh, watching and transferring some over from 1987, and I'm going to tell you what, the quality and the videos yeah. have really come a long way as far as uh, uh, these are all game film, of course, you know, that uh, we were transferring. So it's actually made a big change. Coach, uh, let's look at some highlights of that big win. 40 to nothing uh, over Alcorn Central. Of course, we were on the road over at Alcorn Central. And of course, we told you about how many fans was there. You'll probably see that uh, during the highlights. And of course, uh, if you're out there joining us uh, for Tish County Braves Football Coaches Show, don't forget, uh, we'll give you a chance to watch the game several times on TV 97. And of course, uh, there's your captains that you've uh, selected for the game and the season. Yes, yeah, so we went back to, uh, to our leadership team again, and this was uh, Jimmy Lee Brown and, and Jonathan Terry. They were, we have four seniors on that, and you know, um, Randall and Peyton were our first game, and these two were our other two. So we're just going to continue to go through our seniors with that deal right there. Two fine young men right there for sure. Actually, one of coin toss. That's my first coin toss victory as a head coach there. And, um, with the way our defense has been playing, of course, I deferred and and uh, just let them go to work to start off, you know. There's my good buddy right there. Talking to the world famous Randall Lindsay, That's right? right? That's right. I think, uh, boy, him and Dax and Josh was all keyed up Friday night. They were keeping me. I was uh, doing the Red Bay Hellable game. They was keeping keeping us and uh, Bates man up to date on the scores. And, man, I'm seeing them coming in. I am yeah. like, wow, they're, they're rolling. Right. First kickoff, just uh, – it didn't go as deep, but, you know, you see a lot of white shirts down there flying around. You know, that's what all we can ever ask for. Um, same song, second verse there, you know, Alcorn in a, in a wing tee set. And uh, you know, lucky me, Coach Finch has, has played against um, Alcorn and some of these other teams in the wing tee for a few years. So he's very, you know, um, up to date on that. Butler Whitehead right there on the sack. That's one of our senior guys, plays strong safety for us. And uh, came after the punt right here, didn't quite get it, but going to get pretty good field position right here right off the bat. Ball is going to be about their 38, 39-yard line. You see that? That was scared me to death. You know? 
we were yelling, 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 and Clint Johnson just happens to look down, and the ball's right there, and you know he just jumped on it. Luckily, he got it back. Get the ball. John Bailey Eaton right here is a guy that's really, really coming on for us. Another sophomore I know last, last week I told you how many sophomores we were playing. and He's got a, a deal that a lot of our kids don't have. He's got a lot of side-to-side -side, um, cutting ability and whatnot. And he, he, he does some good things for us. Pass to Jermaine Duckett right here. Uh, nice little move to the outside to get him down there inside the 10-yard line. Uh, good pass by Braden Maxey right there. Uh, go back to the ground here with John Bailey down inside the 5. Then we try to quarterback run. I'm going to get on Brayton about this um, tomorrow. We watched this today, and it, the hole was there, and he bounced it. And he needs to stay in there as big as he is. And third down, uh, we go to a pass play here um, to Caleb McCalvin. I guess it'll be on there. Um, and actually made a drop. And this kid, I'm going to tell you what, he is a competitor. He was mad at himself. And I just told him, I said, Caleb, you know, your time's coming. You're going to be fine. And he, he shows up later on. And and does it. Gallup Mackey continues to kick well for us. Uh, pounds through a uh, field goal right there, gets us up three to nothing. Nice to be up for sure. Um, RJ Bynes still kicking off for us there. Uh, once again, just swarming down there. Skylar Dill on special teams was lights out. I was proud of him. You just have to tune in. You're watching the <coughs> Tishomingo County High School Braves football coaches show. Jack Ivey and Coach Preston Leathers. And Coach, uh, lots of white shirts. And like, like, yes, sir. Like I told you last week, you know, our, our coaches preach that. You know, that's not by accident. They, you know, even if you're across the field, you need to be running to the ball. And, you know, we're getting penetration, getting in the backfield. And, you know, it's hard to run the ball whenever you've got people all over you like that. Try to go up top right there. It's a pretty good throw by their quarterback. You know, he, he'd bring that back about a half yard, and that would have been a, been a nice job right there. Uh, Coach Mahoney, got to give hats off to him. He does our, our, our punt block team right there. And, he, he obviously it worked right there. We had a, several guys that could have blocked that, and I hate we didn't recover it right there for a touchdown. But either way, that'd be two points. We're up five nothing. Sounds like a baseball <laughs> score, but you know. Yeah, when I got that five to nothing <laughs> score, yeah. I said that's one you don't see very often there. But uh, push the ball back to the twenty after the safety, and uh, know we're gonna get good field position. Again, that's Jacob Rushing returning it. Nice little return right there. Needs to get a little bit lower right there, but nice job of getting up in the in the wedge and getting what he can right there. Going back to work on offense. Getting it to John Bailey Eaton again. And uh, once again, you see how he's just, he's got some shift to him. Once, once he gets filled out, I, I joke with him, he's probably not 95 pounds right now, but when he gets a little weight on him, he's going to be a really good player for us. And nice he, little cut right there. And he hadn't really got a lot of experience playing time, has he? No. He's like with only a 10th grader. That's right. And he, uh, in the spring, you know, we, we, we were joking on him and stuff. He came out there and, you know, he was, Coach, you know, I don't like to get hit very much. I said, well, John Bailey, just, just dodge and duck and don't get hit, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, he's going to be a good one. Once again, we got 10th graders just all over the field. Caleb Smith, our player of the week last week right there, making another huge play for us. You know, this is a good throw by Braden, even though Caleb has to dive. If you see that defender right there in front of him, you know, he has to throw that ball where he does. And, and you know, he knows now that if you get that ball around, Caleb uh, is caught. And this right here, unreal, you know. Was that a play? That was a quarterback sneak. We were just trying to get a first down. Right. It was third and one. And, you know, Braden just found a soft spot right there and took it in from about 25, 20, 25 yards out. And that was an awesome call. Hats off to him right there. You know, like I said, we were just trying to get a yard right there and get a first down and, and go back to work. But I'll take it for sure. Uh, Gatlin Mack again, tacking on an extra point. Just kind of eased that through there. But he's, he's getting a lot better. You know, he got kind of frustrated with himself early on in, in the – in the fall, but he's getting a whole lot better. Was that making about 12 nothing? I think? That's right, 12 nothing right here. Got on to RJ here. He, you know, he hit the ball hard, but he hit it low. And we, we, we need to get height to give our guys a chance to get down there and whatnot. <clears throat> Breaking tackles right there. We can't, we can't have that. When we get our, our hands on you, we've got to bring you down. We're going to get a steady dose of this right here again this week. Uh, it's, it's good for us to get in a, in a game against the wing T team last year. I mean, last week, and, and get us ready for what's coming up this week. Alcorn Central kind of putting putting a little drive on us right here, but uh, our defense going to step up and, and make a stop here. Gang tackling is the thing I'm impressed with. You know, it's not it's hardly ever one person tackling, which is fantastic. Forcing turnovers, something we preach a lot right there, and you know, sudden change, getting the ball. And uh, then we've got to go, go to work on the offense and get something going. Try the sweep here on first down, and this is kind of a 
kind of on John Bailey, kind of on, on Braden. That's just one of those 10th grader to 10th grader things we're just going to have to live with right now. You know, they, they both do enough good things for us that, you know, get on them a little bit and then move on. Try to screen pass right there to Randall Merez, and then we go up top here to Caleb and I, son, he had him, he had him beat. And that's, once again, not a bad throw. You just got to, you know, reel that back about a, about a yard or two. Caleb Smith continues to do a fantastic job for us punting. I don't, I mean, I, I know me and you talked about this last week. I don't know if we've had a return yard yet. He's hanging it up or kicking it away from guys and very impressed with that. That's a big weapon for a team. As you, Ole Miss last week, you know, you saw their. Oh, you know, yeah. That, that goes a long way for sure. <clears throat> Don't forget on Friday nights you can take your radio to the game and listen to our TV broadcasts. Of course, we'll have old uh, Blake Long back with us this week along with Randall and Josh. I want to thank uh, Coach Dax Glover for doing a good job filling in Friday night, Coach. Yeah, Dax actually came in and ate pregame meal with us and said, hey, man, let me get a few things, you know, before we get started. That way, he can, you know, he can have some stuff to talk about. So, hey, I know Dax did a good job. Dax is an awesome guy for sure. Of course, you'll be taking a copy home with you tonight. You can grade him out and let That's, him know. I'll do that. I'll do that. Special teams, Coach, I don't know how many total points we got on 16. special teams. 16? 16 points on special teams right here. We, you know, if you remember, we blocked the last one, you know, and I, that, that, that'll get in your head a little bit here. And this was a good job by Jermaine to knock the punter out of the way. I don't know if he meant to or not, but then Greg Moore actually falling on the ball right there for a touchdown. Anytime you can steal points in the special teams, you know, that's, that goes a long way for sure. <clears throat> but yeah, we got we got the safety on the last one, then that right there, and then we uh, recovered a, a kickoff later on and ran it in. So what's that? Is that twenty? Oh, is that nineteen? Nothing now. Twelve and nineteen, yeah. Yeah. Kickoff. Yeah, I think I think this is one R.J. After I talked to him a little bit, I think he got this one up a little bit more for us right here. Yeah. See the height difference on that one is just totally, totally different than the one before that, and it pays off right there. Um, guys getting down the field, just white jerseys everywhere. That's that's what you want. Swarming defense, swarming defense. I'm going to tell you, our defense gave up 14 points in two games, and that you can win a lot of games if you're playing good on defense. They they, they kept us in that game, you know, our, against Marvel, and then this game right here, anytime you pitch a shutout, you're not going to lose. So that's always a good thing. A lot of support. You see the fans right there and the cheerleaders. Uh, I don't think you could have gotten one more one more person up there. And that, that I'm going to tell you what, our kids, they look up there and see that, and they, they love that. that. I really appreciate that from everybody. <clears throat> Alcorn Central going to the air again right here. Um, I think that's the one they called pass interference on Jermaine. I wasn't, I wasn't real fond of that call, but you don't get every call, so that's all right. But I just, I told Jermaine, I said keep playing. That's okay. It wasn't like it was a, a flagrant one by any means. Another turnover here, I believe. Yeah, they, they fumbled the ball right there. Good job, defense again, getting, getting the ball for us. This is a play right here we put in last week. Um, they like to get their their safeties involved in the run game, and you know after a turnover right there, I wanted to see if we could strike quick, and had it set up and just missed it, but that's that's okay. We come back and and do a couple of good things here. Caleb McCallum, there he is. I just told you, you know, told him earlier in the game when he dropped that, and his time was coming. That was a heck of a catch he made right there. Going up top right there, trying trying to get the ball to Caleb again. Um, almost worked out and didn't. Then we go to John Bailey on the zone and. Their linebacker did a good job right there of, of, of getting in there. Uh, Braden right there making a great read on the on the um, on the boot, but he you know he's just got to learn that sometimes you just got to dump that ball off soft instead of instead of bullet in there. Went for it on fourth down, and um, we actually had a guy open in the flats over there, and uh, Braden you know decided to go up to McCallum. He actually caught the ball, but he was about a half yard out of bounds. <clears throat> Oh, that, was, that, that worried me a little bit right there. I thought things were going to get a little bit chippy. Our kids and their kids did a good job of not letting it get to that point, though, which is good. Not a lot of room there on the sideline. No, so there's not. I'm, our sideline, it was about five feet. You got players and the fence and stuff. It was pretty tight. Their field's in great shape, though. I have to give, give credit to their coaches because, I mean, it was like playing on a carpet. It was, it was real nice out there. Credit to our defense that they're throwing the ball right here because, you know, that's, that's not what they want to do. And with them throwing a lot, it just tells me they just didn't feel like they could run it on us. And that, that's awesome. That's, that's, we talk about that a lot. If we get teams throwing, we, we feel like we've done our job. 
Going back to work here, I think that's Ethan Murphy. I can't tell, but 23 is, is that, yeah, I Ethan Murphy right. on, on the belly right there. Another 10th grader. I know that surprises you. Just, you loaded. Just loaded with 10th, loaded graders. 10th graders. That's exactly right. We've told them they just got to grow up. Another little boot here, um, getting the ball to Devin McMeans. Um, he's come on strong for us. He plays in the backfield some. He also plays in slot, and getting the ball in the slot right there. Just kind of getting Braden, you know, out of the pocket some here, as, as you can see, and trying, trying to get him moving a little bit, you know, rather than, than dropping him back a whole lot. We're going to do both this year. We felt like against them, we just needed to move him around a little bit. Braden, Incomplete there, but pass interference, so moving the chain. Braden feeling more comfortable back there throwing the ball? I don't think there's any doubt. He, you know, he was 13 for 23 Friday night, which is somewhere around 56, 57 percent. And, you know, anytime you can get close to 60, you know, I feel like you're doing a good job, especially with us taking some shots deep. You know, he had two or three drops. So, um, yeah, he, he, he's going to get better and better. I was watching him warming up the other day, and I'm going to tell you what, he doesn't look like a 10th grader, you know. McCallum again right there, you know, uh, just laying the ball. I told Braden, just get the ball around that kid right there, and he's going to make that catch more than he's not. He's just, you know, he's a basketball player too, and, you know, that's nothing more than a rebound. Just get your feet planted and get up and shield with your body and make a play. He's going to be a star here, I'm telling you. <clears throat> going back to the ground again with, with uh, Murphy. He got us for a high-low chop block right there. I don't know if y'all know what that means. We, we were cutting somebody and then somebody else actually came high too and that's illegal on all levels. We, not something we meant to do, but uh, just something that happens up front sometimes. Jermaine Duckett right there, you know, Jermaine came on strong wide out to the night and made a few catches, which is good. We like, you see, we're trying to get the ball to a lot of different people. Right. You know, the more people we can get involved, the more the defense can't, can't focus in. You know, we're getting the ball to Jermaine and, and McCowan and Caleb Smith and Devin McMeans and it's just better for us. Um, once again, right there, Caleb McCallum making a play. I'm telling you, he's just – Braden wasn't supposed to roll on this, but he got flushed with a little bit of pressure. And, you know, normally you tell a player not to, not to throw back across his body right there, but I don't know. I might throw it up to him right there too if he's going to make catches like that. So, Of course, we got to enjoy his brother catching some footballs, playing a little basketball, whatever. That's Josh. right. And uh, there's the Tish County band, of course. Uh, Tish County – of course, winning the ball game by a score of 40 to nothing. And uh, don't forget to uh, remind you again to take your radio to the game Friday night. You can listen to the Tish County TV broadcast. And we'll take her back in here. That is the end of our highlight segment of our show. And once again, uh, Tish County winning it by a score of 40 to nothing. Once again, it'll be Blake Long, uh, the world famous Randall Lindsay, Josh Mitchell there Friday night uh, doing the Tish County crew. Then we'll have. Uh, of course, we'll have Steve Bates there, and we'll also have uh, his world famous sideline reporter Randy Pike there. Right. So we're going to have two crews there and uh, covering a little Belmont and Tish County football. We'll talk about it in a minute, but you can take your radio of the game and listen to the Tish County TV broadcast 107.7. And, of course, I told you earlier, and I want to remind you that a lot of folks don't know about it, but they're catching on. You can go to YouTube.com. And in the search, just punch in Jack Ivy there, and it'll show you the videos, and you'll be able to watch this man right here and myself on the Coaches Show, and you'll be able to watch some highlights and uh, feel good about Tish County football, right? That's right. Yes, sir. Coach, I know we got to put uh, these Alcorn Central Golden Bears behind us and uh, get ready for this week, but uh, let's look at maybe some stats in the game. I know you've got them all right up here in the game. I let's do. talk some stats. Uh, Braden Maxey, I'd like I told you, he was 13 for 23 and uh, threw for 164 yards and two touchdowns. And he also ran um, for that one touchdown, you know, on, on the sneak. Um, on defense, Greg Moore had seven tackles, uh, recovered a fumble, and also he was the one that recovered that fumble for a touchdown, I mean, the, um, the punt for a touchdown in the end zone. Those are actually, I may, may be getting ahead of you here, those, no, those are actually our two players of the game, um, offensively Braden Maxey and defensively um, Greg Moore. Um, and I know that we had 298 yards total offense. They had 106. And uh, I was talking to Coach Reese on the way here. He said they only ran eight plays in the second half and only two in the fourth quarter, which means that lets me know that we were sustaining drives and, and keeping our defense on the field, off the field, which is always a good thing. Hopefully you came out healthy after Friday night. Any major we had, injuries? We had one major injury. Marcus Rose, who's our starting right tackle, he broke his arm mm -hmm. um, in the second quarter. And uh, very disappointed about that. He's a great kid, you know, plays in the band too. And um, he, he broke it right across here, and he's going to have to have a, a, a cast above his elbow, and he's out eight to nine weeks. So, you know, we really hate that for him. He's going to be in our prayers for the next few weeks. But he came in, he um, actually came in the, in the locker room when, he got, when we got back, and 
he was in good spirits. Too, but I mean, that just that's a testament to who he is. He's just a good kid. Good kids, you know. Always tough on the injuries, and uh, I'm not sure the update <clears throat> on the kid from Mantatch. You understand, he may be a little bit better that uh, got hurt in the Belmont game. Right. And, and I think Belmont had a player, Jake Johnston, uh, had a little accident and uh, broke a leg or whatever right? and didn't get to play Friday night. Yeah. So we got some kids in the area with injuries. And uh, y'all remember those kids in the prayers because you right. know they'd love to be out there, right? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I heard some, I think, good news on the Mantachi kid today. You know, Bo Sego coaches right. for us, and his brother's the head coach of Mantachi. And uh, he said that they feel like he's going to be fine. So that's, that's great news. It's always uh, scary. Uh, of course, you know, we've had some tragedies in this area uh, in the past where some people got some really serious injuries. And uh, uh, when the field, I, I guarantee you when that happens, you know how quiet it gets in the stadium. And it's, it's kind of scary and stuff like that. Coach, you mentioned the players of the game one more time. Offensive and defense, you mentioned Moore. And yes, and defense, Greg, Gregory Moore. And uh, offense, uh, Braden Maxey. Braden Maxey. Maxey, of course, the quarterback and only a 10th grader. We are going to, of course, uh, remind everybody coming up Friday night, uh, Tish County is going to be hosting the Belmont Cardinals. And don't forget, that'll be a kickoff at 7 o'clock. And uh, tons of food, the concession stand, there'll be a lot of tailgaters there. Uh, come on out and enjoy a great uh, experience for high school basketball. I noticed, uh, you've probably already noticed these Tish County folks like to tailgate a little bit for high school, right? Uh, you know, a lot of high schools don't do that. but That's uh, right. I love that. I remember when I was at Etiwamba and coming up here and seeing that, you know, that's, that's, that's good. It's another one of those good things for the kids to see, you know, seeing parents involved and stuff like that. So if you want a seat, you better get there early. Of course, uh, it'll be a standing room only crowd uh, Friday night. There's no doubt about it. And Coach, uh, I know you're, uh, of course, you were from Pontotoc and you've been down to a woman around and stuff like that. How much do you know about the Belmont and Tish County rivalry? It didn't take me but about a day here to, <laughs> to, to figure that out, you know. I love rivalry games. You know, when it, with Pontotoc, when I was in school, it was Amory. You know, when we were at Fulton, it was, you know, several teams. Uh, when I was at Starkville, of course, it was West Point. You know, everybody knows about the Starkville West Point. You know, if you don't like this game right here, you don't, you don't need to be at any high school football games. This is what you play for. This is what you coach for, you know. And like I said, it didn't take me about one or two days on the job for people to start saying, well, you know about Belmont, right? And you know about Belmont. So I, I know plenty about it. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard about it, you know, the whole time I've been here. So that's one of those games that uh, that's penciled on the schedule, Coach. We need to win, so that they put a little pressure on you know, on those rival games and There's stuff. There's no right? question about that. That's good, though. I, I like that sort of. Thing. Oh, what do you know about the Cardinals? <clears throat> well, I know that they're they're wing T, and I know you know they're very well coached. It didn't take long watching them today to figure that out. You know, they they're always in the right place. Um, I know that those kids have been running the wing T since they were in the seventh grade, and you know that's an offense that if you if you run it right, it's it's very very good. You know, a lot of people. A lot of teams just go out there and they say we're going to run the wing tee. That's not what Belmont does. You know, they they teach it and, and execute it for you know five years. You know, it's ingrained in their life. So um, I know they're going to be well coached. I know they're going to do things the right way, and we're going to have to be you know at our best. You know, to have a chance to win the game. Of course, Belmont uh, lost their first game to a tough Smithville ball mm -hmm. club, and a lot of folks were wondering, well, how good is Belmont? Uh, you don't really know, uh, but you know, of course, Smithville, you got to give them credit. They're all right. you know they played for the state championship last year, but. Uh, uh, you found out a little bit more about Belmont when they went down to Mantachi and got a big win. So I think there were some question marks, but uh, some more questions got answered down at Mantachi. You, you've watched that game. What did they do different in the Mantachi game than it did, uh, I guess, in Smithville? Well, um, you know, I was talking about the sudden change stuff a while ago. You know, forcing turnovers. Anytime you can force turnovers and, uh, you know, cause chaos on another team, you know, it's going to help you out. And, I know they, they returned, uh, an inter I think, maybe two interceptions for touchdowns, and I think they forced, you know, five or six turnovers and whatnot. And they just, they just like I said about us last week against Morville, and, you know, moving on, just got to be crisp and consistent. And that, they seem to be that way. You know, a lot of people don't know they were, they were driving to, to beat Smithville and, you know, had a turnover of their own. So, you know, they could very, very, very easily be 2-0 and right now. Of that, we're talking about the Belmont Cardinals and the Tish County Braves Friday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, like I said, be there early. And if you got some things to do later in the week, get it done before Friday so you can be there on time. And uh, I don't know, have uh, you got any special surprises for the fans uh, Friday night? You're going you gonna to put in some more of this uh, Coach Preston Leathers offense for <laughs> Belmont? Well, we, we can't talk about that too much right <laughs> now, but we, we may have a few new wrinkles and a couple of new things that the kids might like and stuff. They, they actually know what's going on. We're just, we're going to, you have to be there to see that, oh, I guess. I understand. Well, <laughs> let me see. Since, you know, of course, you naturally are uh, new at Tish County, and I know you went through spring ball and stuff like that, but 
it, it takes a while. Like I said, Belmont's been running the wing tee for forever, and of course, I'm sure they throw some wrinkles in there, some different looks they have to from different weeks. But it takes a while to get your particular offense and stuff. Do you try to add a little bit each week to keep it from being overwhelming? I guess you could say. I'm actually I'm glad you brought that up. I'm actually opposite of that. I learned that from Coach Mitchell. You know, we, he believes, and, and we've done this everywhere we've been. You throw everything at him, and just overwhelm him almost to the point of you know, to them not knowing what's going on. And then all of a sudden you come back and you work on the things that you feel like is going to be your base stuff and, and then start growing. And that's what we did. You know, we, our defense can tell you that, you know, we started coming out and we'd be anywhere from eye to empty the first week of practice. And they were like, man, what are you doing? You know, you're not going to start. And I said, no, I, I actually go backwards from that. I put everything in and then we'll, you know, go back and get better and better. And that's why I think we'll improve from week to week. You know, we're, they're still learning. They're young, you know, which, which makes the process harder. But uh, you could tell that they made giant steps from, from week one to week two. Coach, uh, this question's probably been out there before. Uh, can you get too high for a big rivalry game like this? Or I don't think so. I'm an, I'm an emotional guy. You know, I think that football's got to be a game, you know, played off emotion as long as you don't get down. You know, you've got to go – every game we go into, we tell our kids, you know, something bad's going to happen at some point. you just got to overcome. But, you know, I believe wholeheartedly in playing with passion and emotion. You know, I think that's what drives, especially on the defensive side of the ball, you know. Of course, this game right here is uh, a lot of them have been, went down to the wire uh, over the years and uh, been some tough wins, tough losses for both teams. And, uh, of course, it's going to be a battle uh, Friday night. And you going to be there Friday night? I can't wait. I wish Randall, are you going to be there Friday night? Randall said he'll <laughs> be there, and I know Blake will be back, and uh, Josh will be there. We'll have a huge broadcast crew there, and, of course, uh, if you can't make it to the game, you can actually go, uh, I'll post it on my Facebook page. You can actually listen to it on your cell phone, computer, uh, TV 97. We'll have it all out there. We'll give you opportunities, but I promise you, you heard it first, we want you at the game. You can watch the replay later. So that's one good thing about the TV replay. They can go to the game, that's then they right. come back and watch it on TV. Coach, I, wish, I wish everybody from Tish County, Belmont, I hope the whole county's there. It'll, it'll be a fun it'll be time. be nice. Coach, any final words? Uh, I, I just said them. I, I look forward to seeing everybody. I hope it's a you know a great atmosphere Friday night for both of our you know both teams. You know they deserve that, no and uh, I hope it's packed out. I think it's going to be be fun to watch. Coach, appreciate you as always. Thank coach, you. Uh, going over and beyond the call of duty to make this coaching show possible, and uh, make sure you uh, share it on Facebook. If you see the link, uh, go to YouTube.com, uh, search Jack Ivy, and go down and look for the interview with Coach Preston Leathers, and you can learn more about the Tish County game of the week. And we appreciate Denise on the controls, Coach Leathers, our special guest as always. And I'm Jack Ivey saying thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. Stay tuned for more Tish County sports coming up right here on the Ivey Broadcasting Company. Y'all have a great day.